Hey everyone, today we're here at Mount St. Helens. We're about to go check out Spirit Lake, is what I really wanted to see. It's the lake, it has thousands of trees floating in it ever since the 1980s. When this volcano began to erupt, it started as a giant landslide. And that's what you see here, the whole side of the mountain's missing, a landslide. As soon as that happened, it relieved enough pressure for it to erupt and go off. So basically, the landslide here just went through here. Then the giant blast that it unleashed went around this entire area at such force it pushed over every single tree. You can still see them all over the landscape. But the giant blast was moving faster than the landslide that initially went off, it went faster than it, so the giant blast knocked over all the trees. Then, as soon as the landslide caught up with it, it went into Spirit Lake. At such force, it sent a giant wall of water up all around it, 800 feet high. And when that water came back down, it dragged all the trees into it. And that's how we have what we have today. If you look down here in these canyons that were eroded, they started eroding just a year or two after the volcano went off. In some places, there's over 600 feet deep of ash, burying the entire former forest, burying the entire former river. What you see there today is completely new, eroded after. That's all ash down there. You can see the trees all struggling to grow back. Basically anything, even grass struggling to grow back after all the trees and everything got sheared off. You can see all over the sides of the hills here. All the trees laying down all in the same direction as they got pushed over. The bracelet you see on me here is from the building over here where you pay $8 to go in. Or if you have the National Park Pass as I have, you can get into all these places over and over unlimited for the next year. It's not even that much if you're living near one of these places and continuously going. Because it would pay for itself after just, I think it's 10 visits. And it's anyone else who's in your car with you can come in with the same price, which is pretty cool. I love seeing all this erosion down there. You just gotta take into perspective that that right there, that little bit of water flowing there is probably a really big river. Not even the erosion I'm talking about because when you consider these trees down here so far away, if there was a human walking down there right now, unless you had binoculars, you just wouldn't see them. So that's probably a good flow, all that, all that erosion. Just imagine the blast of water that comes down here after a storm or the spring thaw. And you see up top, that big bubble in the middle of the volcano. That's been slowly building, getting bigger and bigger, and that's where they monitor it. If you look up at the top, you can even see it smoking as it usually does. It's amazing how right here, there's no trees. There's so much devastation and damage, but now that we're about to drive on the other side, no roads connect this. It's basically a dead end road on each side of the mountain. It's now gonna take us nearly three hours just to drive to the other side, which doesn't have much damage. A lot of the trees actually survived on that side because there wasn't a blast. Very interesting seeing everything growing back after all these years. It's been exactly 43, four, no, it's 42 years, almost 43 years. Let me show you a few of the signs down below. Take a look at all this sand here getting placed here all over the edge of the trail by the gusting wind coming up the hill. Make sure all this focuses in if anyone wants to read it. These pictures right here are amazing, what it looked like before and after. Also when this went off, all that snow you see there was immediately turned into water. It caused devastating flooding, washing away houses, forests, 
bridges before and after. This donation bin here is pretty cool. See how the bins right here where we are and Oregon right next door has so much more space. Those are the people who are most likely to come here. That's one awesome powerful fan. This tree is really cool also. If you look down here at the rings Really amazing that the tree was able to survive all that hot ash right there. See how tight those rings got. But it looks like just a few years later, it made a lot of good growth. Look how fast it was growing when it was a young tree. This massive sun and lava dome was destroyed in the 3 hours. By then it's going to be getting dark, so we might just camp out until the morning over on that side. But I am going to show you some pretty nice looking logging forest on the way down that they replanted. Here's a beautiful view of Mount St. Helens off to the right. trees are short we would have been right in the path of the blast you can still see trees all over the edge of the road if you look in between these trees you can also see a bunch of their stumps lying around all right so this area definitely was affected by the volcano but you see the trees have already grown back enough that they're already logging it that's what you see right in front of me If you look right in front of me, you see how the loggers left those trees standing in rows like that? I believe that was done so they could drop seeds and replant themselves. Take a look at this. These forests look so healthy. That's the most pine cones I've ever seen in my life on top of trees. This forest isn't even that old. I do still see some massive stumps that you can tell were broken off, not logged throughout them. Right in front of me, it looks so green and healthy. Every tree top is covered in pine cones. Not a single dead tree in sight. All right, everyone, I just stopped here to refuel and also show you guys some of the really nice looking pine trees here that were recently planted. I always bring extra gas in these unfamiliar areas for times like this when you miscalculate and might not be able to get back to a gas station. So these trees right here were planted just three years after Mount St. Helens erupted. Planted in 1983. This is a timber forest. There is active logging going on as I showed you before. They replant it whenever they log and that's how they make logging sustainable. Obviously the trees are not ever going to be able to get as big as they once were. Some trees out here where they haven't logged and they are still logging a lot of the big trees. I see the log trucks go by with trees that are sometimes 
three, four feet in diameter. These would take a lot longer to get there. You see, when they replant it, they are a bit overcrowded. So after a while, some of these would have to die out if the forest was ever to get like it once was. This was planted in 1983. And if we walk up here, it's very crunchy. It's extremely dry around here, but yet it's one of the healthiest looking forests I've ever seen. The entire forest floor is beautiful. Everything is green, not a single dying pine tree in sight. Down low, you will see a few um, branches dying, but that's completely normal. As the trees get bigger, they reject all the lower branches because they can no longer reach the sunlight. Now, walking down here, we see a whole bunch of these rotten stumps. These are the ones that got blown down when the volcano sent out a giant blast. Take a look at the one right here. That stump is massive. That's got at least a three foot diameter. Another one, and if we kept walking buried underneath this growth, there's probably countless other ones. Like I see a bunch of them laying on the ground when they got blown over, still out here. This is really cool to see this all replanted. Some of the healthiest trees I've ever seen. Now we're about to go down the road and take a look at a patch of trees that was just planted this year in 2022. Look at that, there's some deer tracks right next to the road. Here we go by a runaway truck ramp. Very steep hill. We just drove by a sign that says this forest here was also planted in 1983 and it says the date for it to be torn down again for lumber, most likely pulp wood based on what kind of trees are here, is going to be 2028 and that's when they're going to log it again. I got to admit this seems to be a extremely healthy forest as far as growing back. I know where I'm from, a lot of the forest, the logging forest, does not look this healthy. And I'm surprised. It's so much drier around here, but yet, I, it must be because the forest is able to retain a lot more moisture. Just like, you see what we're driving into, this thick haze? I don't smell smoke. I don't think it's wildfire smoke this time. I'm pretty sure it's from the ocean, just a bunch of fog and mist coming in from the ocean. That might be what's helping this forest just flourish. I'll show it once we get a nice area. Last night, I slept over at Walmart's parking lot, which was very close to the ocean, and the whole parking lot was this beautiful fog, and it lasted until the afternoon. I want to see if anything's growing yet. They seeded it this year. Maybe nothing would start growing until the spring. It says planted, so maybe it is actually seedlings. I'm used to them putting in seeds. Just cut down this year, or planted this year, one or the other. These stumps don't look like they were done this year. You see what I mean? There's not much debris on the ground. They clean it up in these piles. Look at that giant stump right there. That's probably was taken down by Mount St. Helens. You see a tree was growing on top of it and they cut that tree down. Look at the size, that stump right there must have an eight foot diameter. Massive. So I'm not seeing any trees yet. I don't see any seedlings growing, nothing yet. So they must have just planted seeds. That must be what they mean. And I don't see any of them coming up yet. But just give it a good five years. I bet this will be looking like a Christmas tree farm before they really fill in. So this tree I'm on right now, I'm going to see roughly how old it is. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Yeah, that makes sense. Yes, it definitely was 
planted probably in 83 and it probably started growing the year after it's kind of rotten in here in the middle can't really see it as well but that makes sense around 40 years or so and that's when they cut it down again same exact thing they do where i'm from every 40 years the trees get cut down but if you want something better like a lumber forest because this stuff here i doubt they're using it for lumber it's most likely a pulp wood forest it only takes 40 years. Usually the bigger white pines, they let grow for at least 70 for lumber. Yeah, so that was pretty exciting right there, getting to see. They probably logged it a few years ago based on the decay and how it's already dried out all the stumps. Definitely not logged this year. Planted this year, definitely. Nothing's grown yet, so it was seeds they planted. You see all the haze off to my left? You'll probably be able to see it once we go around this next corner. Right in front of me, you see they also probably logged within the last couple years. That's probably also been seeded too. Yep, lots of logging going on here. Everything you see here, it's gotta be mist coming off the ocean since we're so close to it. I don't think it's smoke. I've been close to wildfires in the past couple weeks and you can smell it when it looks like this. It even gives you a headache when you're very close to it. That looks kinda cool how they left that one strip of trees wondering if they plan on that dropping some seeds kind of like the strips we saw way up on the hill earlier so that cool looking forest we just went by where they left it standing it said the trees that were still standing and the ones they just cut down were planted in 1973 and they reseeded it this year all right everyone right now we're going to take a look at the sediment dam right downstream of mount st helens it's here to stop a lot of the sediment from going downstream and wreaking havoc on fish habitats and other wildlife. Look at the beautiful moss on this tree here. Every branch is covered in it. Look at this abandoned access road to the dam. Doesn't look like anyone's driven down here in years. That just makes this walk even nicer. That moss is awesome. So many of the trees in the area are covered in it. A lot of these forests are classified as rainforest because they receive over 100 inches a year. It's amazing to think that since the forest floor is currently so dry, the area is currently in a drought. That's why it astonishes me how green everything is regardless. I'm guessing right below the surface, it must be pretty wet down there. The soil must be a lot better. This abandoned road is very nice to walk down. A lot better than the trail right next to it. It's good that they allow you to walk down here. Oh, uh, look at this. That looks like bear poop. So there's probably bears out here. That's very fresh. And no, I am not the one who stepped on it. So that was somebody else. There are grizzly bears around here, but not that many. We're most likely going to run into a black bear, if anything. Can't really see anything yet, but I do hear water roaring down there. Now the road looks to become even more and more abandoned. A lot more trees across it. And this is a paved road. That's why you don't see anything growing in the middle. It's having difficulty. But as more sediment gets down here on top of the road, it'll become easier over time. Right here looks like there was a landslide at some point. Down there is probably the new access road. Lots of incredible moss. These vines creeping across the floor, they keep almost tripping me. On this section of road, I can see a while back there was a landslide here. And it put enough sediment on the road that there are trees growing on this section. Here's another spot. You can see the land slipped at some point. Got this big tree here uprooted, and now it looks like the road just disappears into the ferns. 
must have been another quite large landslide. Yep, lots of ferns right here. But then it quickly opens back up. It looks like this far down the road, they probably placed all this dirt here intentionally to stop you from going any further in a vehicle since it looks like the road is not even here afterwards. There is a culvert pipe here, amazingly completely unclogged. Here is the big dam that we're gonna find our way up on top of. There is a trail right here, kind of. Lots of spiders and other stuff in here. Getting lots of spider webs on myself. I see lots of angry mosquitoes. I think the best way is to follow this sort of trail because it doesn't matter how we get up there, we've lost the trail. There's a lot of mosquitoes in here. There's a lot of vines with prickers crawling over the top of the ferns. I just actually pushed over this dead tree. It was so loose I grabbed onto it and I heard it make a creak. I could tell it was about to come down and I didn't want to walk under it so I pushed it and it actually made a good trail pushing everything in my way over. I'm gonna have to pull a lot of seeds off myself that are sticking to my clothing. This area is all plowed down and flat. Probably done by some creature like a deer. This looks like a resting area for them. This is the best trail right here. So that road just fizzled out into nothing. Didn't even completely go to the dam. But thankfully there was some animal trails that we were able to follow. Right now we're walking up the back side of the dam. The discharge is over there. Then we're probably gonna take that road back. Way too many pricker bushes to do that again. Did not expect that. I thought it was gonna be a trail going the whole way nicely, but it wasn't. I got cut up pretty badly. See, I'm starting to bleed there. Bunch on the other leg. Lots of prickers. Finally out of that. Now we're back up here. And we're probably gonna take the new hiking trail back, not that road. So here is the sediment dam. It's pretty discolored. I see a bunch of Canadian geese down there. The whole thing is sediment. See that? This looks like a giant sandbar. We were driving alongside that earlier. We could see this giant sediment bar going all the way up many miles. Now we're going to walk down here. We got to see where the spillway is. That's pretty cool. Check it out. There's a beaver lodge right down there. And you can see in the back the trail they've made through all the plants that they travel. They're always swimming through there. That's why nothing's growing in that one spot. And if you look further down, there's lots of beaver trails going through the swamp. Right here we're walking onto a small viewing platform. So I guess the point of the barbed wire fence was just to intimidate you since you can simply just walk around it. It looks like there used to be a sign here, but it's gone at the moment. This is really cool. Take a look at all these pipes sticking out of the hill so it can drain properly. And there's a lot more beaver trails down there in the swamp. That's amazing. I've never seen a dam like this with so many weep holes all over it. This place to me looks more like a retention pond. I wonder if that's the main purpose of this place, just to hold up all the debris that might come down here during a large storm. And they're not gonna let us go near the exciting part where it's discharging. That's just a spillway right there. This is really cool. Look at Hat. You have a flight of stairs, another flight of stairs, a ladder, another ladder. 
That's cool. So all the water currently is coming out over there. Right now you can see all the water is just flowing right on out. It's not collecting any sediment at the moment, so it must be when they're concerned during storms. When this thing fills up with water, the sediment would get, would get stuck, sink, allowing the water to come out. It's not the case at the moment. Any time this place would fill up like that, it looks like the beavers would be completely flooded out. But it also doesn't look like it really happens much. This place must look so pretty when it's raining out. Where I'm walking now is all moss. This would just pop and be so green just after a few days of good rainfall. Now here's the actual hiking trail going back. Thought it was interesting just to take the abandoned access road. It's always fun to see what happens to things after people stop caring for them. Take a look at all these seeds that are all stuck to me. The plant does that, hoping to get them stuck to an animal and they're successful. I'm walking around picking them off before I get back in the car, spreading the seeds. That's what they had in mind. Look at these double doors over here. This is kind of cool. It's not locked, but it's secured some other way. Can't open it. What do you think? Is this animals or people going around the fence here? Wow, just take a look at all this dew here. It hasn't rained in days, but that fog you saw earlier that occasionally comes in from the ocean, that's basically a good watering. That's why everything is probably so green around here. And look at this. I just found myself some yummy blackberries I'm about to eat. I could probably pick a lot of them if I looked around. Look at all the berry bushes. Yeah, they're everywhere. Let's go get some more. Yeah, this bush up here has so many good berries and half of them aren't even ripe yet. Look at these big prickers. I just got that in my leg. Up here, lots of yummy berries. Yep, that was a little overripe and that bug on there scared me. There's a garden spider. I want to watch out for that guy. But there's a really big berry right beneath the garden spider I'm going to try to get to. I don't think he wants me there. Trying to get that big berry down bottom. Oh, he's coming towards me. All right, the garden spider went away, so now I think I can reach under and get that nice big berry. It's a little overripe, but I'll eat it anyways. Take a look at this orb weaver. This guy's harmless. They're big and intimidating, but not venomous. Don't mean you any harm. It's a good bug. I have a lot of those big spiders, the orb weavers, around my security lights, and it helps keep the mosquitoes at bay. I'm thinking that there's probably a lot of bears around here. Walking around, I've already seen a few dozen bear poops. That one's very, very fresh. That one right there is not so fresh. And I've seen ones that are been there so long that the rain got rid of the entire poop, just leaving behind all the berry seeds, because they're probably here because there's so many blackberry bushes. They love those. All right, here we go on the actual trail back, not just the abandoned access road. Lots more berries. Lots of climbing raspberries too. Those were the bad ones while bushwhacking. You see how they grow really fast and they climb over all the ferns? Well, the ferns die back to the ground every winter. So these things must grow extremely fast to go over the tops of everything. Beautiful forest. This area looks really pretty. Look at all that moss on all the trees. The beautiful sunshine going through it. Looks like we got a couple quick switchbacks here. They put this piece of wood here. They don't want you sneaking through there the easy way. I hear water trickling. And here's a bridge. It's the same stream that was going underneath the abandoned road just below. This moss is amazing. It shows you how there's always fog coming through here. Lots of rainfall. This part 
of the forest is supposed to get over 100 inches a year. Here's the nice little trickling stream. And the abandoned road is right down there, another 100 feet or so. We just found a culvert pipe. It looks like water was flowing there recently. Here's a good view of the entire dam. You can even see the water flowing out over there. I want to briefly show all these signs and make sure everything focuses as in if anyone wants to read this. There's going to be three of these signs right here. This is the first sign. And the second one talking about the sediment. And now we're going to go over to the third sign. Check out this really cool abandoned house right there. Now there's an abandoned Shell gas station, which is pretty cool. It says on the maps that it's still open. That's pretty cool. All boarded up. And now there's an abandoned house here and a bunch of other random structures. A couple of dilapidated trailers. coming in from the ocean is so nice. It's leaving behind condensation on everything. Do I can see how everything is flourishing out here despite the drought. Here's a kitty cat. We're waiting for the police to show up. We're trying to catch a couple more of them. There's a box of cats that are sadly no longer alive here. What do you guys think happened here? It looks like this guy's camper caught fire. The wheels are completely gone, not even a rim on it. These trees are so nice looking with all their moss. This is Washington's logging forest, which is technically a rainforest because it receives such a high amount of rain. Normal year, well over 100 inches. That's how this moss is growing so nicely. Trees are so big around here. Extremely dry. We've been following a large river 
that's very low. Every bridge I've been crossing over on this road, probably this one too, they all seem to be dried up or barely flowing. That's not flowing that well. Every culvert I've come across, no flow. Alright everyone, we just reached this gate that's blocking the road. And there is a sign here saying they don't even want people driving up here when it is open. But this is the road that's supposed to be bringing us to the other side of Mount St. Helens. So we're going to have to find an alternate route. A lot of these logging roads are blocked off by the companies. Take a look at this. How do you think they log a hill that steep? And you can also see they replanted it. From this far away, it's hard to tell, but it looks like the baby tree is already starting to grow. They've probably been growing for at least five years, maybe longer. This is getting a little annoying. Every single road I try to go down is blocked off. Maybe for good reason, so people don't start fires, I'm not sure. But... This logging forest is nothing like I'm used to. Everything is blocked off. Right here on this road, you can see to my left, these trees seem to be five years old or so. The ones on my other side, they're probably about 30 years. They'll be getting cut down again pretty soon. Give it another decade. All the trees around here seem to be pretty young. Take a look at this really steep hill that they logged. I would love to see what kind of machine did that. It is really nice to see that these logging companies replant everything very nicely and they don't really rely on leaving a couple mature trees to blow their seeds down because that doesn't always work out as well. All right, we're moving away from the five-year-old trees. Now we're coming into ones that look like they're probably maybe 15 or 20 years old. Look at all this logging that was recently done. Whole mountains bald. back into the forest. I've never seen paved logging roads before. It must be because it rains so much here on a normal year that they would just wash out on these big hills. Check out some of these massive ripples on the road. There's one. Here's another one. Looks like they had to, they had to fix the road a number of times from the ground shifting severely. Looks like the hill started sliding slightly. See, it's really messed up here. These paved logging roads are very nice. Oh, here's more. That just came out of nowhere, could barely see it. both ends of that they had to cut out and it looks like they gave up on it just gravel at the moment I could see they definitely sawed off that asphalt right here looks like it slipped a bit along the hill yep right here you can see the road looks like it started slipping
good view of the logging. I just stopped at one of these ripples in the road. We've been going over dozens and dozens of these and I finally figured out what's probably causing it. If you can see from the top to the bottom, there's probably almost two feet of loss. You can see they've patched it, put sealers in there to stop water from getting into it. But I've noticed every single place this is happening, the land is either slipping or more commonly, there's a culvert pipe beneath it. So I'm thinking that it's just really soft under here from water going on the edges of the culvert or it just wasn't compacted correctly. But I don't think that's the issue. I think it's just the lay of the land because it's happening in areas where you can tell the mountain likes to slide. All these culvert pipes seem to be dried up. This one's dried up. I'd say 90% of the culverts and bridges, there's no water under them. It's just been so dry out. Yep, this is the hill slowly sliding this way. You can see up there where it's also breaking this whole part of the road is sliding over the years. At least we can read everything. This picture looks like it's kind of destroyed. Here we are on the other side of Mount St. Helens. Looks really pretty over there with all the cloud cover on the rear side of it. That didn't get destroyed. You can still see all the trees standing high. That all got singed years ago. Yep, and here's even a sign about it. When the volcano erupted, it singed all these trees, as you can see here in these other pictures. It's actually starting to rain here. It's starting to sprinkle. After all these years, there's still so many trees, petrified, standing up out of the new growth. But at least all the new trees look healthy. Take a look at how many trees are still dead standing up from the 1980 eruption. There's so many trees still standing up. Massive stumps, some of them at four feet in diameter. Looks like some recent rocks slid onto the road. Mount St. Helens looks really good right in front of us.
All the cloud cover around Mount St. Helens is getting worse than we saw before. Looks like it's about to rain. See all the rocks right here sliding into the road. It looks like a wow, the guardrails all smashed. A bunch of them have gone across the entire road. like this side of the mountain we get to go way closer this road's actually kind of falling apart a lot of spots it's slipping as the land is sliding all right everyone it says we can't go up to the top that looks like a pretty rough road anyways it says it's closed monday 6 a.m through friday 12 p.m looks like they're doing work on the road All right, everyone, we're about to walk up this only quarter mile staircase to get a good view of Spirit Lake. It's not as windy right here, but I bet it's gonna be really bad once we get to the top in the open. Then we're gonna drive down to where all the logs are, and that's gonna be a little longer hike. This does look really cool, this staircase. percentage of the lake is filled in with a bunch of floating trees and logs. Small little island of them there. Whole bunch of them back there. Another whole bunch of them back here. And around the mountain where you can't see, we're about to do another hiking trail. There is a trail here that does it. But it says that it's over 11 miles long. There's no way we could do that before daylight and get back. See, every single bank of the lake is covered in trees that washed up. Because if you remember what we saw on the other side, as soon as that volcano went off, the landslide that hit this lake, you can see right here how everything slid, right? It pushed into the lake, creating a giant wave of water 800 feet high that sucked all the trees that the volcano's initial blast knocked down. Because the volcano started as a landslide, but the blast was faster. It made it across the entire area, knocking over every tree. When the landslide hit later on, the giant wave pulled all the trees back in, and to this day, they're still floating here. I might actually be able to see where we were yesterday. It's possible. I do see a building up there. So this whole thing was a landslide. You see the forest is slowly recovering. I wonder what this road is down here. That'd be a cool place to get to. So just by looking at that sign, that little island right there is around where Harry Truman's lodge was. So that was all land back then. I'm trying to block the entire camera's wind.
right, everyone. Right now, we move down just a little bit. That right there is that tiny little island that formed where Harry Truman's house was. And right now, we have a closer look at all those logs floating. We're about to do another hike a little bit further down that's supposed to go right down to the lake. The forest has recovered pretty nicely on this hill. Don't see any bald spots like over here. Got a little culvert right in front of us. Pulling back out of this parking lot. See the road in some places is a bit of a mess. I just got out of the vehicle to show you up close what a lot of these things look like. As you see the road is slowly slipping down the extremely steep hill. Beautiful out here. I just stopped here on this section of road to show you some really bad damage. Let's see what they got for culvert pipes first. Yep, it's a corrugated metal culvert. That's how they all are around here. Thankfully, they're not using plastic junk. You can see right here it's starting to slip. And they just put a little bit of patchwork there so it's not a severe drop when you go over it. Looks like possibly bear poops. Right here slipping a lot. You can see a whole bunch of grass and little trees starting to grow in this crack because everybody goes around it. That's a good four inches of slip right there. But I wanted to see this, which looks like a tiny little sinkhole. I just wanted to look inside it. Yep. Definitely a little tiny sinkhole. Pretty hollow in here. Basically just the asphalt holding that up between here and here. Kind of hollow, but it would take a really heavy vehicle to get that too sinking it's not going to go very far but it is enough to definitely cause an accident here's a really bad dip this one goes down well over a foot way down a couple big bumps up here goes a dump truck going to that road they're working on that goes further up the mountain here we are on the end of the lake and there's the trail down there, as you can see. It looks like the majority of it's pretty flat. We're about to go down there to that. Look how nice and lush this area is. But over here, it's having a lot of trouble growing back. Let's take a quick look at this sign. All right. trails right over here at the end of the parking area yeah that's gonna be a much easier trail than all those steep stairs I can see it right here wrapping around so it's gonna be a nice wooded trail too all right everyone we're about to start the trail it's only one mile down to the water it starts off with just a few steps but by the looks of it it's gonna be a nice smooth trail going the whole way. It's a good looking trail. All right, everyone, here we continue further down the trail. It quickly becomes really wooded. It's really nice, it keeps the wind off you. Very green, but there is a pretty steep drop right here. This trail is actually a great example of what's happening to the road. You see it's soft so it pushes out from underneath the pavement. Just like right here. These less extreme examples. And 
And here, look at this. There's all these tree stumps everywhere. This tree pushed over. Every tree that once stood tall here back in 1980. This was a beautiful pine forest. I know some of the forest around here in the middle of the day with those tall trees you go in there. It's very dim, very cool, very healthy, very wet. I think it's pretty interesting how all these trees are growing out of the steep hill and straight up. Take a look at this pine tree. It's the biggest tree I've seen the whole hike. That one grew really fast. Probably one of the first ones to get established out here after the eruption. This is a plant I wouldn't want to fall into. Look at the giant thorns sticking out from the bottom of the leaf along the stem. Here's another tree that really took off over the past 40 years. Look at the size of this tree. That's got well over a three foot diameter to it. Massive. Here's another one. They're all over the hillside. Here's a pretty good looking view. It's becoming more open. Also very sandy right in here. Look at the size of some of these trees towering way above my head. If you look carefully, they're absolutely everywhere. Getting closer, got a good view. And this is a really nice part of the trail. Got a bunch of dripping water. It's very loose here. There's more of those really thorny plants. Beautiful part of the trail. I love this twist underneath all of these trees that are all slanted off the hill. Right here you can tell water comes gushing down during storms. This is a very nice zigzaggy trail for the most part. Smooth, easy going. We're about halfway down. Got an uprooted tree here full of really beautiful mushrooms inside here. Those grew pretty recently. Are they still soft? Yep. Now we're in a pretty open area where not much got to grow back. We just came off this really nice hill. Down here where it hasn't really been able to grow back, you can still see a lot of the trees are burnt. Somebody left us a note here. Hornet nest around the corner. Take detour. Very aggressive. And that's very recent, October 6th. So that was not that long ago, only about a month. So it looks like right here where the wood is placed across and up there, the nest is somewhere here. So we gotta go off the trail a bit. Looks like this is where everyone else was going. Some very angry hornets there. For a while now, the trail's been very flat. It looks like down here the ground is not nearly as fertile, probably because a ton of volcanic ash collected down here. Not a lot of nutrition. But on hills like that, it maybe just got blocked a lot of it. Imagine walking in this spot back 43 years ago, what it may have looked like. With trees this thick, with that diameter standing tall hundreds of feet.
All right, we're getting back into a more exciting part of the trail, and it looks like we're getting pretty close to the lake. The lake didn't look like much at first, but once you get down to it, you can see that it's really big. When we were looking at it from that lookout platform at the top of the staircase, it didn't look very big until you consider how big the trees are actually floating down here and how many of them there are. Oh, there's a waterfall right here. Somewhere, there's a waterfall. I can hear it loudly. And there's a big swampy area all built up. It looks like it was recently flooded. Maybe a beaver moved in. This looks amazing. Look at all those probably hundreds of thousands of trees around the edge of the lake. Right here's a steep trail from people going down to look at the waterfall, but it looks like it just wraps around. I can't wait until we get down there up close and see how big those trees actually are floating. Around this corner, we might have a really good view because that's where the waterfall is. Going around a nice ledge. And there's another switch back down there. Unless we were to come here in the winter, it doesn't look like you'd ever really see the entire waterfall in full. Or unless it was just absolutely blasting, because it's all underneath these trees. You can see a little bit of it though. A lot of footprints right there going down into the pool. Wow, we're finally down close. And these trees are massive. If you look beneath me, it's a nice sandy beach. So all the stuff must get thrown up here during violent storms or I assume the water level dropped since it was all placed here this is the biggest tree around if I'm standing next to this that's got a good five foot diameter I wonder what this is from if they moved it since it was put here or if they did something with the tree before it arrived here This is one really big tree. I don't think I want to walk around down there. Most of the ones I'm seeing floating are kind of small, which means the risk of them rolling and you getting crushed or trapped underwater is pretty high. But I am going to go down there to the edge where the water starts. I've never seen such a big piece of wood in my life thrown up on the beach. This is really pretty, all these pieces of wood. They're all polished and smooth. This is quite the hike going over all these things. Because a lot of times these trees aren't close enough together where you can just bounce over there. You gotta make sure they're not gonna move like this one I'm on right now. All right, almost to the end. Yeah, nothing's really stopping this thing from moving a bit. I'm gonna get off of this. We finally reached the edge of the water. Crystal clear water. Let's see if we can see any life. Apparently the life in the lake recovered after just a five short years. 
see the water line here a little bit down from normal this must have been thrown up here from the initial impact as far as the eye can see i can't even see open water from here there's so many trees now let's see if i can get up on top of this log is this floating i can get on that without really any worry up onto the big one now the water's starting to get deep i see a fish I just saw a fish down there swimming. Now you see, if they were all big like this, I'd go a little further. But any of these could roll. This is quite the sight. I'm going to come down here. See what's floating. What's stable to walk on. That water is absolutely crystal clear. Don't want to walk on this. This bigger guy, you see how it could roll and crush you? Because this thing here, it's waterlogged. It's filled with water. I wouldn't be surprised if this one piece alone weighs almost a thousand pounds. See what I'm doing right here? See how they are both moving around, including the one I'm on right now? It's holding me. It's pretty stable. It would be stupid to go out any further at this point. Maybe over here where some of them are anchored a bit better. I don't think this is the way I came. I gotta make sure that's stable. Good. And look at this. You'd fall right into all this. Water's warmer than I expected. Wow. There's a whole nother cove of it. Just look at the satellite map I'm showing on the screen right now. I'm standing on a pretty big log right now. See, it is completely floating, but it's anchored well enough where it's not gonna turn. That part of it's bottomed out. See, the water heater is a couple feet deep. I'm only gonna be walking onto the ones that I know are enough to support my weight without shifting at all. Like this big one right here, I'm gonna jump over the smaller stuff. Yep. Even this big one, you see? If I really tried enough, I think I can make that roll. This one I could probably make roll. See it all bobbing around? You see how these are turning towards each other like gears? That's where the pinch point would be. You could get your legs in the wrong situation. Oh, we got a friend. Look at the bald eagle. That storm cloud is quickly moving in. It looks like on that short mountain right there, it's raining. We might get that before we even get out of here. It'll be a good thing as far as camera exposure, but that's going to make it cold here really fast, especially with this whipping wind we have. This piece of wood's really cool. Look at that. Take a look at this power of that lever. Lifting up that big piece just by standing on the smaller one. I can see all the logs way out there. I can see all the logs way out there shifting around in the wind. All right, everyone, I'm going to show you these logs and how they bounce around a little bit as I walk on them. This water's crystal clear. See, this big one, I can barely make it move. It's so heavy. But now I'm going to try stepping on a few of these I'm not gonna put my full weight i'm just gonna make them bounce a little bit yeah that wouldn't hold me it would definitely roll too that wouldn't hold me whoa this one's moved a little bit
these logs actually do have a lot more play to them now that the wind really picked up since when I went out there before. As long as I keep good balance. If I was on the edge of some of those ones, even the one I'm on now, this thing could potentially roll and knock me off. Like this one here, if I'm on the edge of it, this whole thing can roll over. And possibly I could get my leg pinned or something in there. The water's only about two and a half feet deep here. This one's a bit fun, just to push up and down. The water's refreshing, it's not that cold, and the waves I just made from that one, it made the one I'm on bounce a little bit. And this one's pretty big, hard to get it to move around. Too bad it's not a warm day. This would be a good place to swim well where the logs aren't. Dangerous swimming next to the logs. It's starting to look really pretty out. I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see the sun again. Before we head out of here, I'm going to try to take a loop over here on this trail. And I want to see where the bulk of this is. What you're seeing here is not much. Over here is where the bulk of the logs are all collected in that other cove of the lake. Take a look at this tiny little tree. Found a spot to grow inside that log. See lots of bird prints down here on the edge. In a moment, we're probably gonna come up where that waterfall is releasing its water. Just gotta be careful walking on these smaller ones. They can shift really easily. Even some of the bigger ones that are just balancing. All right, this looks like the perfect way to get back over here. All right, everyone, standing up here on top of this log, here's the stream entering the lake, going underneath all this debris. We'll get to see that up close in a moment when we cross it. All right, we're going underneath this tree now. We have a fire ant friend, and I hear water trickling in here crawling around. This is really cool underneath here. Oh, we have another friend right there. There's the stream. On some of these trees, especially towards the bottom, look at the bark still see a good amount of the bark here. Here's a good angle of that stream coming out from the waterfall. I'm on top of like a bridge. Wow, these pebbles here, they're so light. Feels like freeze dried food. Climbing up over all this stuff to a rocky ledge. Now we can look down on some of the floaters. Beautiful red rock here. Wow, this is actually very easy terrain to navigate around the side here. There's going to be so many more logs around the side, if that satellite image is correct. 
walking around on these beautiful cliff-like terrain, beautiful stones, beautiful scenery. I see a bunch of trees actually growing out there on the floating logs. We just got to get around this bend and the scenery should be pretty good. It looks like it's about to get too steep, so I'm going to start heading up here. I'm so out of breath. All over the place. It looks like there's elk tracks. I'm hoping to see that other side of the lake before it gets dark. That's a lot of logs. Unfortunately, there is no trail leading to this place. And I don't know if I'm gonna be able to continue on this terrain without a trail. It's starting to get dark. I hear more water here falling. All right, everyone. So I just went around where that rocky terrain was up a bit. There was so many elk tracks and stuff. It also, one area I turned around, it was kind of scary. It smelled so bad like a wet dog smell, like there was maybe a pack of them laying down somewhere. It was really stinky up there. But right here, we have this map right here on the phone, and the majority of that log buildup is, if we flip it around, right here. Not the tip, but right here. Right here is the trail we're on, this little dotted line. And this is all we can see here. As you can see, there is no trail here. There's one up on the ridge, but there's nothing right here. So maybe if we hike down this, but that's just a far away shot. You wouldn't get to see the whole bulk of it. It's starting to get pretty misty and foggy up there on this little hill. Those cliffs are where that dripping waterfall was at the beginning. And right here is that short detour around the bee's nest. And yes, I see that, look at that. Here comes one, it just flew out. Coming back, you can even see the shelf right here where the trail is. Usually when I'm hiking, it always feels easier going back. But this is one exception. It's probably because usually when I go hiking, I go up a mountain, not down into a valley like this that I gotta hike back up through. We're finally starting to feel some mist coming out of those clouds I kept pointing out. It's finally misting and it's nice while generating a lot of heat going up this hill. It sure is getting windy and stormy. It's starting to mist up here. It's looking very beautiful out right now, driving around on these roads. So the other trailhead that I pointed out on the map, it doesn't look like it actually gets close enough to actually see the lake. So we're going to call it a day now. I hope today's video was interesting. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. This road's a mess.